from the Technology Center on the campus of Herkimer College. This is HCTV News, a student-produced newscast covering Herkimer County and the community it serves. Hello, I'm Chris Klausner and welcome to HCTV News from Herkimer College. We're here every Thursday afternoon this semester at 5 o'clock with a full half-hour newscast produced by students enrolled in communication arts programs here at Herkimer. ACTV News is a production of advanced video production students enrolled in communication arts, radio, and television broadcasting program. Topping off the news this week, international student Peter McAvoy passed away last weekend. McAvoy, a Herkimer College senior from Dundee, Scotland, was the captain of Herkimer College's men's soccer team. McAvoy collapsed in his dorm in the Reservoir Run apartment complex and was unresponsive even after campus safety attempted to revive him. He was transported to Little Falls Hospital where he was then pronounced dead. Currently, the cause of Peter's death is still unknown. In his memory, a candlelit vigil was held on Monday at Weirham Stadium where coaches, professors, teammates, and anyone else who was close to McAvoy um, shared the feelings and how it has affected them. In honor of Peter McAvoy's death, balloons were released into the night sky. A quote from Dean of Students Dr. Matthew Hawes says, quote, We have been in con contact with Pete's family, and our deepest condolences are with them all. As they grieve this tragic loss, our thoughts are also with his teammates, coaches, friends, faculty, and staff during this difficult time, unquote. Counseling opportunities are also available to any students or employees who may need it. And earlier today, Herkimer College hosted a Wellness Day event in the RMCC building. At the Wellness Day, several different vendors came to the campus to speak with students to give helpful tips and advice on how to stay healthy and safe. This is our annual um, Wellness Day, and we have uh, about 30 vendors from the community. People like uh, Public Health, um, Health Net, some of our own people like the Fitness Center, um, the Athletic Trainer, we have Planned Parenthood, and we do it mainly for the students, but it's also open to the community and faculty and staff. And it's usually well attended, about 150 people every year. So far today, it seems like there's been a good flow of people through the fair. Uh, I haven't been in two years, so definitely seems like more participation uh, from students and staff. Next Friday, May 2nd, the music industry uh, students will take to the stage at the Tremontaine Cafe for the last showcase of the semester. The following week, Music Club will be hosting a music festival called Merp Stock. And you can see Merp the Penguin will be there. And so should you. Uh, there will be performances by Sayo, Jason Davis and the New Philosophers, Brian Howell and the Standalones, The Old Main, The Reality Tree, Haley Chromic, and more. Each band has at least one member that has tied to the music industry program here at Herkimer College. The event starts at 5 p.m. and here on campus, but the location is going to be determined by the weather. There will be signs posted pointing people to where to go on the day of the festival, and we spoke with Haley Chromic about these upcoming events and how she's excited for her performances. So there's a show called Merp Stock being held at Herkimer College on May 7th that I will be performing in. And uh, it's being promoted by the Music Industry Club along with music industry students, like their majors and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm probably just going to be performing a few songs at the Merp Stock because uh, there there's like a huge lineup that is uh, going to be coming up after me. I don't know if I'm going first where I am in the program, but I guess we'll find that out later. This is my last semester, so this will be last show, probably playing here for a while um, since I'm transferring to a different school, but um, hopefully it'll go well. The Music Industry Showcase will be on May 2nd at the Tremontaine Cafe on Lincoln Avenue in Utica at 7 p.m. And Merp Stock is going to be held at the college campus on May 7th and will start at 5 p.m. It is only a few weeks from Herkimer College's 46th annual commencement ceremony. The commencement is going to be on May 16th in the Sarkish Bush Theater in RMCC building. There will, be, there will not be any rehearsal commence for the commencement. If you are planning on graduating this semester, then you will have to report to the TC building to line up no later than 4 p.m. 
graduates will be lined up alphabetically by their major. If you have not yet picked up your cap and gown, you can still pick those up until May 7th. For those of you lucky enough to be accepted into the Honor Society, Phi Theta Kappa, the induction ceremony for new members, is going to be held on this coming Tuesday, the 29th. The ceremony begins at 5.30, but officers and new inductees should show up no later than 5.15. During the ceremony, the newly elected officers will be taking office. The new officers are President Yan Li, Vice President of Service Xavier Goins, and Vice President of Leadership Quinn Nugan. Congratulations to all the new officers. This past year, communication arts students have brought ACTV viewers several unique live programming events. The three-hour live ACTV takeover ran last fall. We've brought you several live play to the camera shows, including last night's live show with Frankfurt band SIO, where we broadcasted a special live newscast from the Herkimer College open house this past March 29th. And we've been here every Thursday at uh, ACTV News at 5 p.m. Next week, we've got one more unprecedented live television event in store for you. Starting Monday, the HCTV News crew will bring you live news every day this week. So tune in, uh, tune in each afternoon next week for HCTV News at 5 p.m. This will be the first time that a daily live television production has ever been attempted here on HCTV. There's more news straight ahead after this break. During HCTV News, I'm Chris Klausner. Melissa Kroll will join us after the break. She's up next with your complete weather forecast. Stay with us. Coming up next, the weather outlook for Herkimer and the surrounding areas here on HCTV News. Stay with us. The Herkimer College Music Industry Program returns to the Tramontane Cafe on Friday, May 2nd. It's Murph's Rock and Roll Circus live at the Tram. Murph. Acoustic tunes from Billy Muha. Murph. Intricate improv jams from Copper Vein Clones. And raucous progressive rock and roll from Jason Davis and the New Philosopher. Murph. The Tram serves coffee and food. Bands associated with the Herkimer College Music Industry Program serve up the tunes. Murph's Rock and Roll Circus. Murph. Live music at the Tram on Lincoln Ave in Utica, May 2nd. Brought to you by the Herkimer College Music Club. Jump into the world of radio production and electronic media at Herkimer County Community College's 91.5 FM WVHC. When the semester kicks in, students take over the airwaves, turning their dreams and ideas into real live radio. Topping Herkimer County Community College news today with graduation soon approaching. Are you the next big voice? Find your home on the airwaves at Herkimer County Community College and WVHC. For more information, go to www.herkimer.edu. Families come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice. Or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. Sometimes you've got an office family. Yes. And sometimes team family has got your back. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. The flu can unravel everything. Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself, protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. Now, the weather outlook for Herkimer and the surrounding areas, here on HCTV News. Welcome back to HCTV News from Herkimer College. I'm Chris Klausner. And I'm Melissa Kroll for HCTV News Weather. Melissa, I don't know about you, but I am ready to move past all this rain we've been having. Yes. Everyone says April showers bring May flowers, and if that's the case, boy, we will have some nice gardens next month. Let's take a look over at our weather wall, brought to us by our friends at weatherunderground.com. Now, as you'll see, there's really not too much going on in the state of New York or even around it for that matter. We do have one small storm making its way to the east. It won't be bothering us today. In fact, tonight it's so dry that we're under a red flag advisory. What that means is that these conditions are ideal for fires to spread. So keep 
your eyes open for that. All right, taking a look at tonight's forecast. Tonight, it's going to start off in the 40s, actually, and holding pretty steady there up until midnight. Then, due to these clear skies we're going to be having, it'll be dropping down until the upper 20s. Mostly clear, uh, as I said, winds from the southeast at 16 miles per hour. Check out tomorrow. Tomorrow, partly sunny. I think we're all pretty excited for that. High of 64, low of 43. That's 64, boy, that sounds pretty good. Warmer, a UV index of 6. So believe it or not, if you're going to be spending some time outdoors tomorrow, you might want to put on some sunscreen. All right, Saturday. Saturday, you know, that weather can't last forever. It's going to be rainy, high of 57, low of 36. Brief showers in the morning, winds from the west at 15 miles per hour. And Sunday, Sunday, we are back with some partly sunny skies, high of 53, low of 35, and winds coming from the northwest at 15 miles per hour, so it might be a little blustery. All right, let's take a look at our extended outlook. Monday, high of 58, low of 32. Again, that sun is out there. Tuesday, another sunny day. Boy, this is, this is nice. High of 58, almost in the 60s, low of 43. Wednesday, the sun can't last forever, right? It'll be rainy with showers, high, in the, high of 58, low of 40 degrees. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy because I'm used to giving kind of rainy or even snowy forecasts, but right. not this time, except for Wednesday. But. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you, Melissa, for that weather update. When we return, Brady Lawrence is going to get you caught up on the latest regarding the Herkimer General sports teams. Stay with us. Catch up with the Herkimer General sports teams. After the break, it's Sports Wrap, here on HCTV News. Make the right connections with your communication arts degree from Herkimer College. Interested in radio? Meant to DJ? Then Herkimer College's radio TV program is the program for you. Learn all about the radio industry, record your own show, or even produce a live one. The possibilities are endless. For more information about communication arts programs at Herkimer College, visit www.herkimer.edu. I never get the flu. My kids don't need more shots. I don't have time. We're all healthy. No matter how you build your excuses, the flu can blow your house down. I can't believe I used up all my sick time. I missed a week of school during finals. Now my baby has it because of me. The hospital? Keep your foundation strong. Vaccinate. Hello everyone, I'm Brady Lawrence, bringing you this week's edition of Sports Wrap here on HCTV News. It's been a busy week for the general sports teams here at Herkimer. Let's get you caught up. To men's baseball, this past Friday, the Generals played host to the Adirondack Timberwolves from Queensbury, New York, looking to keep their win streak intact. Herkimer would indeed manage to do that as they won both of their games with their doubleheader against the Wolves, taking game one, six to nothing, and winning game two, eight to one. Leading the Generals to victory in game one was Kyle Garrison, who picked up his third win of the season, filling seven shutout innings and striking out 10. The Generals would then travel to Buffalo to take on the Erie Community College Cats on Saturday, also sweeping both games, extending their winning streak to 12 straight. Herkimer would win each game with relative ease, taking Game 1 by a score of 4-0 and Game 2, 7-3. Freshman Mike Harrington would continue a strong season on the mound in Game 1, tossing a complete game shutout while striking out three. Herkimer will travel to Fulton Montgomery Community College as they hope to keep their streak alive. Moving on to men's lacrosse, the Generals dropped a tough one to Tompkins Cortland Community College on Saturday, as they lost at home by a score of 14-5 to finish out their home schedule and finish in fourth place in the conference with a 5-6 record. Offense was scarce for the Generals, but Kyle Lee was still able to net two goals for Herkimer, his 28th and 29th on the season. The Lady Generals lacrosse team also had a tough outing this past week with a loss, dropping their home finale to Monroe Community College by a score of 15-1. Courtney Canavan scored the lone goal for Herkimer, her 32nd of the season, to lead the team. The loss drops their record to 4-5 and five on the season. Hope is not lost for the Lady Generals, however, as they will travel to Genesee Community College on Saturday to take on the Cougars. They'll have to come out on top in order to qualify for regionals. Moving on to softball, the Red Hot Lady Generals were in action this past Saturday as well as they took on the Tompkins Portland Community College Panthers, winning both games of their doubleheader to improve their season record 
to 19 and 5. There was no shortage of offense for Herkimer as they managed to hit six home runs on the day, taking uh, game one by a score of 8 to 0 and game two, 9 to 2. In game one, Ashley Starrett led the way with two home runs and three runs batted in. Next on the schedule for the Lady Generals is North Country Community College, today at home. Well, there's this week's edition of Sports Wrap for you. I'm Brady Lawrence. Stay tuned. You're watching HCTV News. We'll be right back with more after this. children and take poison. <laughs> Would you? Time now for the HCTV News Question of the Week. It's your turn to express your thoughts on campus-wide issues. Hello and welcome back to HCTV News here on HCTV. I'm Chris Klausner. Thanks for joining us. Time now for our HCTV News Question of the Week, where we comb the campus looking for your on-camera input. While the wellness fair was going on earlier today, ACTV News reporter Sean Messier was on the scene asking what the students took away from the wellness fair today. I'm Sean Messier with HCTV News Question of the Week. This week's question is, with the wellness fair taking place in the RMCC, what are you taking away from the fair? So what did you take away from the wellness fair today? Well, I learned that the first condoms were made from linen sheaths, and I also learned that I can put out a small fire in 3.4 seconds. Okay, so tell me, uh, what did you take away from the Wellness Day today? Well, I learned that you could get herpes from any form of sex, and that it's the most common viral infection in America. And one out of every four kids over 18 is exposed to herpes. So tell me, what did you take away from Wellness Day today? Well, I'm not a student here, but uh, I, I'm actually representing CareNet today. And uh, I really just hope that students are really conscious of their health, because I think it's really important. Um, stuff that we do at CareNet is we really try to give, make them aware of STDs um, and try to help them through unexpected pregnancies and stuff like that, even answer a lot of different questions. So hopefully today they can really understand and um, just be aware of those different things. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, I've learned a lot about fitness today at the Wellness Day, and I've got my water bottle, so now it's time for me to go for a run and get in shape. I'm Sean Messier with HCTV News Question of the Week. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Sean. Be sure to tune in next week for another edition of ACTV News Question of the Week. And don't be shy if you see our crew around campus Thursday afternoons looking for your opinion. Well, stay with us. Coming up after the break, Brady Lawrence introduces us to Emily Muha. That's straight ahead in our Newsmaker segment. Right here on ACTV News, stay with us. Peaceful, calm, full of natural beauty, the Adirondack Park in upstate New York is the place for your outdoor adventures. Take a leisurely stroll as you browse the shops of scenic Old Forge. Take a dinner cruise along historic lakes. Boats depart at various times throughout the day from Old Forge Pond. Or head deep into the Adirondacks for a true wilderness experience. Set up at your own private campsite. Build a roaring fire. Take a relaxing canoe ride. Enjoy the natural splendor that's just up the road. The Adirondack Park, where you can get away from it all without going too far away. Are you ready to go? Then go ahead and visit www.apa.state.ny.us for details regarding your next Adirondack adventure. Hello 
Hello and welcome back to HCTV News. I'm Chris Klausner. Thanks for joining us. We're here each, we're here each week at this time with a 30-minute newscast produced by Herkimer College Communication Arts Radio Television Broadcasting Majors. This live weekly newscast is a production of RT263, an advanced production class offered here at Herkimer College. Up next, Brady Lawrence is interviewing Emily Muha to tell you all about the Bike and Build nonprofit organization she is a part of in our live newsmakers segment. Brady? Thanks, Chris. Yep, I'm sitting here with Emily Muha, who's actually the sister of current music industry student Billy Muha, who's the music industry club president, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. And she's here to tell us about the Bike and Build organization, which she's involved in. So, Emily, why don't you tell us a little bit about what that is and what you do there? Okay. Um, well, Bike and Build um, is a nonprofit organization that um, basically what they do is they host uh, cycling tours across the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, basically, there's eight different um, routes that they have currently. Um, and, and the whole point of it is actually to um, ra raise awareness um, for, non for the affordable housing issue in the country, mm -hmm. um, and also to raise money to um, help out those organizations. So like Habitat for Humanity or Building Together, mm -hmm. um, organiza organizations like that. So tell me a little bit about um, the affordable housing problem that you're trying to tackle with the organization. Okay. Um, well, affordable housing is considered to be housing that costs 30% um, um, or less of the uh, income uh, of the household. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would include um, whether you're renting or you are paying for a mortgage you know, on a ho house that you're purchasing, um, and basic utilities, so like water, uh, electricity, heat, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, according to the U.S. Department of um, Housing and Urban Development, um, there are about um, 12 million uh, Americans, um, families that um, currently pay 50% or more, mm -hmm. actually, and so that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. I was uh, perusing the website of the Bike and Build organization earlier, and I saw that they've raised $4.5 million for these organizations yeah, that they're that they're over the for. years. So um, I, I assume that helps a lot with the, the families that are in a predicament where they're paying 50% or more of their income on their housing. Yeah, definitely. Um, they started in 2002. That's when Bike and Build first started, and so they've had that many years. And mm -hmm. um, over the years, they've also gained more routes. So like I said, right now we're up to eight. Um, yeah. So how did you get involved or first hear about the Bike and Build? Okay. Um, I was in um, AmeriCorps National Civilian Community Corps for mm -hmm. two terms. Um, and that's a government-funded program. Um, and the, what that program does is um, it's, like a, it's a team-based program for 18 to 24-year-olds. Um, and so once they get there, they're split up into teams, and they go. Um, they're sent to help different nonprofits and state and government organizations that apply for help. Um, and there I learned about Bike and Build through uh, a couple of um, my fellow uh, AmeriCorps members. Um, and then I also worked with Habitat for Humanity in um, Portland, Oregon uh, for a couple of months, and that was amazing and it just kind of opened my eyes to the affordable housing issue. Mm -hmm. So what are, what, what are some of the upcoming events or routes, you called them, that, that this organization is putting on? Okay. Um, well, the one that I'm on is uh, Providence to Half Moon Bay, California. Um, and that's like near San Francisco. Um, and basically all of their routes start either the end of May or early June and last until like the end of August about. Um, and so I specifically start... Um, June 9th <laughs> and, and uh, in Half Moon Bay somewhere around the 23rd or 24th of August. Okay, awesome. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be back with more from Emily Muha of the Bike and Build organization. When you call 911, you want a trained emergency medical professional to take care of you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Emergency Medical Services is a community effort. That's why we want you to join our team. Consider becoming an emergency medical technician. Pull over when an ambulance is approaching. 
learn CPR. Urge your elected officials to support emergency medical services. Together, we can save lives. Ah, there's nothing like the changing of the seasons. The waterways are less crowded. The temperatures are colder. And for many unprepared or inexperienced boaters, it's the perfect opportunity to set sail, dip paddle, or let that motor rip. But there's one thing that never changes regardless of the season, and that's always remembering to wear a life jacket. A message from the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Brady Lawrence, sitting here with Emily Muha of the Bike and Build organization. She was just telling us how she's getting ready to embark on an over 3,000 mile trip across the country from uh, Providence, Rhode Island to where Half was Moon it? Bay, California. Half Moon Bay, not the cookies, but the Bay, California. <laughs> so you, you obviously are very concerned with the, with the affordable housing issue mm -hmm. in the country, how there's, uh, how many Americans did you say? 12 um, million? Yep, roughly 12 million that are paying more than 50% of their income for their housing. I see. So how, by, by biking across the country, how are you going to raise money for this, this um, cause? Um, well, it uh, started off um, getting donations from friends and family. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the other things that I'm doing, um, I'm hosting a uh, fundraiser garage sale um, on May 24th in Rome. Um, and then also, um, I'm having a car wash on June 1st at the Legion in Rome. Okay. So yeah. these, these are uh, to raise money for the, yeah. for the $4,500 Yeah, I have to, to raise $4,500 um, in order to go on the trip. And uh, most of that will go towards um, Bike and Build writing grants mm -hmm. um, for non uh, sorry, uh, affordable housing organizations um, that apply for them. And those are specifically for uh, programs that they have planned um, that are planned and executed by youth because um, mm -hmm. they're trying to get um, our generation uh, engaged in um, service and civic engagement and that sort of thing. Okay. And I believe we have uh, a graphic to put up. It has your, your, your profile page on mm -hmm. the website where people can donate money right down there. People can donate towards your cause, right? On yep. There. Yep. Uh, so tell us how other people can get involved with this whole ordeal. Okay. And um, well, other than donating, um, as far as bike and build goes, um, if a student was interested, because they do set it up so that it, um, so college students can participate. Um, since it starts the end of May earliest and ends uh, before classes would start again, it's perfect for a uh, college student wanting to get involved to apply. And that wouldn't be until next fall for the next, um, next set of routes that people okay. embark on. All right. Thank you so much for being with us, Emily. Uh, that's Emily Muha of the Bike and Build organization. You can find out more about Bike and Build uh, on www.bikeandbuild.org. That's all for Newsmakers. I'm Brady Lawrence. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Brady, and thank you for joining us. That's HCTV News for tonight. Just a reminder, you can catch HCTV News every Thursday afternoon at 5 o'clock throughout the semester. Tune in for an encore presentations at 5 as well. Newscasts are also archived on our YouTube channel, and find us on Facebook, too. For more details on the communication arts programs offered here at Herkimer College, visit www.herkimer.edu. For everyone here in the communication arts programs at Herkimer College, I'm Chris Klausner. Thanks for watching and have a great day.